Good. Qualifying today, Jack Hewitt, the winningest driver in series history, and Chuck Leary, the fastest driver by virtue of his pole speed here a year ago of over 141 miles an hour. Jason Leffler just signing with Joe Gibbs Racing and Tony Elliott. Tracy Hines and the series point leader, Ryan Newman. We talked about Russ Gainster. He's up there in the top three in points. And Kenny Irwin back where he loves racing. And, buddy, you got a big welcome back from Jimmy Sills. I know you visited with him the other day as well at Nazareth, Pennsylvania. That's just a starting place for him. Look for him to advance himself right up to the front before this is over. There's a great name, Bentley Warren. He's been racing forever and ever, so it seems. Gary Heber outside of row number nine. The top 24 qualifiers made it in on speed. The others, the final qualifiers you see right there getting in on the hooligan race. And J.J. Yaley, that's not his normal car. He had problems in practice earlier today. And Stevie Reeves allowing him to climb aboard the 98 because Stevie's not running for points while J.J. Yaley is. And there you see among those who were here but failed to qualify of this race. Paulus making his name in the winged sprint cars as we get set to go racing here tonight. 80 laps at Gateway International Raceway. Ah, they're only four deep going into turn one. Didn't take them long. Now look at the racetrack. Very, very tight in turns one and two. We see two. It's really kind of like for our NASCAR fans, almost like a Darlington without the bank. I talked to a lot of the drivers today that said it's very similar to Darlington and Phoenix. Uh, you run, run the racetrack very much the same. You saw the pole sitter dropping back. That gives Chuck Leary in that maroon car the opportunity, though Jason Leffler comes charging up to the inside to try and grab a position. Yeah, and Leffler won in Nazareth, Nazareth a couple of weeks back, and you see him sliding the cars already. They're not getting a lot of grip, even though that right rear tire is 18 inches wide. They're sliding through the corner. They have to start the race on the same right rear tire with which they qualify. Not the other tires, but just that one. Basically, it's the only tire that <laughs> touches the ground during much of this race. Well, when you have a 1,500-pound car and you mash down on that accelerator with 800 horsepower, something's got to spin. And the right rear on these cars is a major tire that takes the weight load as they go through the corner. You see them sliding right there like you're on or 10 laps, and we're only on lap number 15. Yeah, and you can see the draft that we were talking about earlier in the show, the two car there, Kenny Irwin. They just absolutely eat him up down the straightaway. Newman has a very good car in the corner. Wow, slide job there by Kenny Irwin Jr. Base 96 to 104 inches. Good scramble right there. As they work into the corner, Leffler is in that nine, being bypassed by Tracy Hines and then taking him <laughs> right back. They pass in the corners like most race cars do down the straightaway here. Now, Jason Leffler has a car owner that everybody knows, Tony Stewart's car right. owner of that car. Putting a lap on the 54 of Keith Butler, who's out of the midgets. If you're curious, the difference, midgets have 72-inch wheelbase, sprint cars have 84, and these Coors Light Silver Bullet Series cars, the Silver Crown cars, if you will, have anywhere from 96 to 104. I was interested to see a wide variance of choice that, uh, you know, some guys like the longer wheelbase. So you see some of the specifications. I was surprised today how many went with the minimum and how many like the stretched 104 wheelbase. Yeah, I would think that uh, you would probably go with the longer wheelbase to have more control. They said not so. They like the 96 inch wheelbase to make it turn in the center part of the corner. And they do ride on the right rear tire so much in these cars that a shorter wheelbase gives you that luxury of being able to turn and get the back end out just a little bit so you can get off the corner. We have caution on the speedway here at Gateway International Raceway, the 111 of Jimmy Sills. Jason Leffler moving to the inside there in that white and blue number nine. 66, Gary Heber, the Langhorn, Pennsylvania racer. He's fourth in line, that red machine. Heber looking to the outside there in the red car. Talked about Robbie Flock earlier. 
That drying and chassis with Chevrolet power, and there goes Heber. Trying to grab the spot from Leffler in the nine. Back into turn one. Waiting and watching, here comes Kenny Irwin in the two. Sees his opening, grabs the lead from Ryan Newman. Looks just like it, they don't know when these guys go at it. But right back on the outside, here comes the 14 car again. Still 23 laps from the finish. Full center, still back in six. Jack Hewitt is Chevy Beast. Still back in third. Again, the Beast chassis, B from Bob. The EAST is East. Bob East is the man who does that design work. Kenny Irwin today, you were there, buddy. He said, you love this, don't you? He said, man, I just eat it up. Ryan Newman still oh. trying on the outside. Yeah, and you can see, oh, man, you Look talk about cars, side it's, by yep. side. Here they go. I'm telling you, they're, they're on the throttle, turning right. Oh, oh, trouble. Major problems here on the main straightaway. Brian Tyler left rear is flat on that car, and he's fighting and trying to hold it out the wall. Caution is on the speedway for Brian Tyler. Lap number 59 of those three black machines. Third spot, you see, still being held onto by Hebers 66. That is he darting inside and outside around the blue number two of Kenny Irwin. Irwin just gets a little better run into the corner in the blue car there. Center part of the corner here, pretty evenly matched. 73 laps going up on the board as Heber goes for second. That Russ Gamester there, he's running along in fourth place right now, has not finished out of the top ten this year. He is second in points, Gamester is, but that's Heber in the 66. On the Hoosier 100 back in 1990, Heber did. Gamester there in fourth. He's running a little bit higher in the center part of the corner, but he must be doing something right because he has run the lead, lead cars down. He's holding Jack Hewitt at bay in that yellow number 23. And Larry Mack, this might be the most comfortable lead anybody's had all night long. Well, Eli, I talked to Johnny Vance and Kenny Irwin's pit. Now, I'm not sure how he knows this because, again, they're not talking to him, but he said he's using all he's got. There's nothing else left here with about six laps to go. Johnny Vance's racing team. Eli, look at this fight back here. Jack Hewitt's moving up on the outside there in the yellow car. He's now all of a sudden come to the forefront. We know that he's got a fast car. He's set on the pole for this event. Now he's starting to move up towards the lead. Winningest driver in series history who had a third place finish at Pikes Peak earlier this season as his best run of the year. Don't know if he's going to have enough time to get to the front. Five laps to go over six miles remaining. The gamester there and in the red car just in front of our guy that sat on the pole there. I tell you, right now he's making the, they say do it, Jack Hewitt. He is doing it right now, running very, very well. And again, that black 37, that's Tracy Hines. Oh, and look at him slide it through the corner. Hines inside of Hewitt with five laps to go, battling for fifth and sixth and seventh. Now Hewitt climbs the limited banking here. Yow, and makes the move on the outside there. Gamester drops back just a little bit. 1989 midget champ, Gamester in that maroon number 51. This taking place about a second and a quarter behind the leader Ryan Newman. Then on the left of your screen, the blue number two. That's Kenny Irwin. The yellow machine gets the break on Heber, grabs a spot, but here comes Ryan Newman. Newman's going to pick up the victory here at Gateway International. Here comes the next battle. Hewitt will hold off all comers. But yes, Ryan Newman, who was fifth in Orlando, second in Phoenix, the winner at IRP, finished fourth at Indianapolis's mile and second at Pikes Peak. Larry Mackey's won it again. Well, I'm here with the